This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. You're you're smiling. You're like you're 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 so horny that you've got the exclusive, aren't you? You're uh, like you can't believe you're here ready for this. The views this is going to do, the ad revenue this is going to create for your YouTube. Thanks. Can I read you something first? It'll take a minute, but let me just read this. Okay. So there's like, what is this from? Right. So this is quotes from Shelley Finkel, mm -hmm. right? From which he gave to World Boxing News. Mm. Okay. The fact is, they don't want this fight. He asked for $50 million, never thinking we'd come up with it. When, when it, we came up with it, he said, I don't want to take the fight in the States. I'll take it for less in the UK. He sent us a bullshit offer thinking we'll never take it, and we took it. Joshua said on TV that I will fight him next. He's not fighting us next. I, Joshua also said, I swear if he offers me $50 million, I'll take the fight tomorrow. Uh, well, we got him the 50 million and he still didn't take it. In fact, they sent us an offer which was a flat fee of 15 million dollars with a rematch clause, which we accepted, and then a date of September the 15th at Wembley, which they knew that was a date for Canelo. So they never had any intention of doing it. How can you go on the same day as Canelo? They are fighting for Vetkin on a later date, so why wouldn't they? Uh, couldn't they offer that date to us? I asked them on Sunday what date and what venue, and they wouldn't tell us because they never wanted to do this fight. I know they don't want to come out and say we don't want the fight, it's dangerous, but they are saying they want it and putting up every barrier they can to stop it. This is quite true. Okay, well, yeah, I think it's about 50% true, something like that. So, analysing that, where do we start? Uh, they made us an offer for 50 million. The offer came from Deontay Wilder. People keep talking about proof of funds. There was no proof of funds, to be honest with you. I don't think even proof of funds was requested. All that we requested was a contract. We went back and said, we're interested. Can you send a contract? They said, no, you've got to agree to the fight. I said, well, we're very interested in the fight, but send a contract, we'll have a look. No, we're not sending you the contract. That's the first one. Number two is dealing with some of the other stuff. I thought they said we never sent them a date. And so the originally, when my dad met Shelley, we talked about September the 15th at Wembley. At the time, it didn't look like Canelo Golovkin was actually going to happen. So, obviously, when we sent that offer, they took nearly four weeks to come back because they were hoping by then we'd signed Alexander Povetkin fight. And funnily enough, that was the weekend, I believe, after Frank Warren came out and said Joshua signed to fight Povetkin. So they come out, oh, unbelievably, a couple of days after and said, we accept the fight. Unfortunately for them, we hadn't signed to fight Alexander Povetkin. So we said, okay, obviously with Canelo Golovkin going September 15th, we're not going on that date now. We'll look at October, November, but I need a little bit of time to speak to the venues, blah, blah, blah. Obviously it's in Cardiff. I mean, like he reads every one of my interviews, of which I've said a hundred times, this fight can happen in October, November, and it has to be Cardiff. Uh, I said to him, so this is when he accepted the offer, this was on like a Monday, I said to him, I need to speak to a few venues. I'll be back to you with a contract on Friday. On the Friday, I sent him an email and I said, I haven't quite finished the contract. I'll have it with you in the next couple of days or 48 hours. By Monday morning, he had that contract. Okay? Five days later, or six days, I think the email come through Monday morning in the early hours. It's another thing that he does, but I'll come on to that later. They sent me an email saying... Oh, by the way, in the middle of that, they said, I know you're working on the date time, but can you confirm it's Anthony Joshua's next fight? I went back and said, yes, that's confirmed. All right? So they know it's his next fight, and they know I'm working for October. So that, that date and venue thing is just a, a, another excuse for them. This is the best one. So on Monday, they say, we will come back to you with the contract on Friday. Okay. So they've had it for a week without making any comments. Now they want another five days till they send the contract. Now I knew, because Shirley's slippery, the play on words is, we will send the contract back on Friday. They didn't say, we'll send the signed contract back. But they wanted me to, they wanted to leave it open. Then, the actual downfall of this fight was an article that Shelley did on Monday with Dan Raphael. 
which after I've been putting the WBA off for two months to try and make this fight, he said to our mate Dan Raphael, heavyweight world title holder Deontay Wilder is ready to sign a contract to face unified Titus anti Joshua this fall, provided that there are what Shelley Finkel describes as small changes to the agreement. I'm sending him back the contracts with a couple of notes. Hopefully there is no problem and we'll sign after the changes are made. So he was going to send it back on Friday to sign? No, he wasn't. So, sorry, signed? No, he wasn't. He's was going to send it back changes. Anyway, the WBA see that. They've waited two months. Enough was enough. People have got to understand about the whole 24-hour WBA thing. That wasn't, they didn't just wake up one morning and say, right, it has to be in tomorrow. That fight was called about two or three weeks after the Parker fight. It was called in April, okay? We're about to hit July. The WBA are extremely pissed off. Alexander Povetkin is extremely pissed off that Wilder has wasted everybody's time because we should have just fought Wilder straight off the bat. So are you going to believe me? Are you going to believe Shirley Winkle? I wouldn't really believe any of us if I was a member of the public. But what I can tell you is, however low your intellect may be, just understand one thing for me. If you want this fight, supposedly more than anything in the world, and I send you a contract, why the fuck am I not getting any feedback for six days and then being told that in another six days you will get my comments. So 11 or 12 days to get comments on a contract that apparently we're all so desperate to sign. It's absolute bullshit. And another thing that I think is so telling from that is Eddie Hearn made a bullshit offer. Is that the same bullshit offer that you supposedly accepted? So what you're saying is, is that you have accepted a bullshit offer for your client. Those words make it very clear. Finkel, Winkle, Dinkle, whatever you want to call him, had no intention of doing this fight. Deontay, I'm not so sure. I have to trust that he's a fighter. And, and Joshua wants this fight more than anything. And I think Wilder probably does too. If Finkel's got the mindset that this is a bullshit offer, do you think he's going to try and push that through? No, he's not. So whatever you think of me, whatever you think of Winkle, just know that they had the contract for what would have been 11 days before commenting. I'll ask you one other thing. Do you feel that now it's all come out, the comments that they wanted to make about the contract, they know? Do you understand what I mean? Right. You, 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 do you agree with me on that? So they know the comments they wanted to make about the contract. Because they, they're saying them they now. They would know, yes. So why on Sunday does he send me an email saying, I'll be back to you on Friday with the comments? So why what, is he saying to them? Right. So why would you not ask happened in that five days to yeah? No, but why wouldn't you make? Why wouldn't you tell me on Sunday? Why wouldn't you tell me the week before? It's absolute bollocks, rubbish. You don't wait. If Anthony Joshua wanted a fight and they sent a contract, I would send it to our lawyer. I would send it to Frank Smith. Within forty-eight hours, maximum, they would get a reply on the comments. So if Deontay Wilder does want this fight. He has to ask himself and his team some serious questions who, in my opinion, have done him a disservice by not dealing with this appropriately. But there is some great news. Because, again, whether you believe me or whether you believe Dinkle, the truth is going to come out. Because I haven't withdrawn the offer. The offer is still there. He can sign for that fight today, tomorrow, Friday, next week, and it's on. So if you're so disappointed, if you're so devastated, if you're so gutted, if you can't believe this has slipped through the net, it hasn't. Show me the comments on Friday. Show me the comments next week if you need a little bit more time. It's still on. So if you want it, it's there. We'll see if you want it. And even better than that, we all know, I've not mentioned the $15 million, but it's all out there. That is the fee that he was offered. Last night, I sent Deontay Wilder an email. I'm very, very disappointed in your team. They never come back to me on comments on, the, on our contract.
But, great news. The offer is still there of 15 million to fight the next available date at Wembley Stadium, which is April the 13th. And even better news, I'll give you $5 million just for a little tick over in October or September against an opponent of your choice in New York. Because you turned down $5 million to fight Dillian White, but that's probably a little bit too tough for you. But the great news is you can fight Brazil, who AJ Box like in his 16th fight or something like that. He had glandular fever, but that was back then, no problem. Or you can box someone not even easier, someone like you boxed already, for $5 million. So I'm offering you $20 million over two fights to fight a tick over and to fight Anthony Joshua on April the 13th. So you don't have to take the tick over in September, October, but you're gonna get considerably less to box in September, October if you don't take it. But no problem, you can just sign Joshua in April. But if you want even bigger money, if you want a little bit more security, if you want to earn more over two fights than you can anywhere else, that offer is there for you. It was extended to him in writing last night. And we will see. But my focus is for him to sign a the Joshua contract. Did you get a response back from that? No. Did you put a possibility of him actually fighting on the same card as Joshua? No. So that wasn't an option? No. The option is, no, because he doesn't... I don't think he wants to fight in the UK, full stop. I mean, he didn't want to fight Dillian White, okay? $5 million. He didn't want to fight Anthony Joshua at $15 million. So I'm offering him $5 million to fight in the same place he boxes all the time, where he normally gets half of that, in an easier fight. I mean, just box Luis Ortiz, who I know everyone's making out is he's, he's, a, he's a good heavyweight. It's also a guy who's very, very old, who was pretty much, I'd say wasn't passed by the NYA, New York State Athletic Commission. He was proven to have high blood pressure. I mean, I think an hour before the fight, it was off, right? This is a guy who previously boxed Malik Scott and Dave Allen. Unfortunately for me, I promoted those fights. And I mean, but all I ask the fans to do is, don't worry, the fans will see the truth because we'll see if he signs. But all I ask the fans to do is know one thing. I'm not the boss. Right? I saw Tyson Fury stuff today. Oh, Eddie Hearn don't want him to fight. Mate, If I, it doesn't matter who I want him to fight. He wants to fight everybody. He decides everybody he, he fights. So all these other people, I mean, like Fury, oh yeah, send me the contract, I'll fight you next. Come on, mate. You've seen the last plate fight, seen the next plate, you're fine. But just understand this. After 22 fights, Anthony Joshua would have boxed, names that include Dillian White, say Dominic Brazil, because at the time it was his 17th fight. Vladimir Klitschko, Carlos Taka, Joseph Parker, and Alexander Povetkin in his 22 fights. Wilder's had, what, 41 fights? And he's fought one real live opponent. And he was pretty much out of the game because he's had high blood pressure and he was 40 or whatever it is. So I think in Wilder's 23rd fight, he boxed Jason Gavin on the undercard of Kelbrook against Sean Porter, yeah. I think. Yeah. Do not question the integrity or the desire of Anthony Joshua. Trust me on that. And I'll tell you something now. If this geezer, Deontay Wilder, signs this contract, he will get absolutely dispatched by Anthony Joshua. Believe me on that. So we will see. We will see. It comes around so quick. I remember when we sat talking about... Uh, Bellew against Hay, do you remember? When it was like, what was it November? And it was remade for May. And we were thinking, oh, it's so long. This fight will come around so quick. So you haven't got to come back to me today. There's no deadline. But the contract is there for you to sign. And now I'll, I'll make it even better for you. I'll give you much more than you can earn in September, October. So we will see who's real and who's not. Joshua continuously steps up. Do you think I want Joshua to fight Povetkin? Before Wilder? Povetkin's like, I mean... Give me your top five heavyweights in the world. In no order. No, I'll give them to me in the order. Because then you'll never get an interview with Deontay Wilder. I don't want to give them in order. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it, right? I think it goes like this. Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder. Dillian White and Povetkin, I have like this. Joseph Parker. I mean, I, again, with Fury. I, I, 
I, I believe that you have to put Fury up in that top, but I can't at the moment because I can't take him seriously yet. But he's an excellent technical fighter. So I'll put Povetkin in top five all day long, maybe even top three. But these are the fights that Joshua's in. That's a dangerous fight. But I'm giving Wilder the option to fight Brazil or someone like straightforward. But anyway, we'll see. The truth will come out. All right, okay. You did an interview December last year. December, all right. Okay. So, quote from you, that you said that any planned unification fights in 2018 mm -hmm. uh, won't be delayed by his WBA mandatory challenger. Mm -hmm. So we're in a situation now where obviously he fought Parker. Mm -hmm. and we're in a situation now where the WBA mandatory situation is putting the fight with Wilder in jeopardy. That's fair to say? No, because we could just ask for an exception when the deal's done. So just like we did with the IBF. So all you do is, you ask for an exception. We've signed contracts from both parties and you put that exception request in. We could have done that after the, the Parker fight. We could have done that uh, th three days ago. We could have done that before. The WBA, once you get to a position where the contracts are signed, the WBA wouldn't have, before they lost their rag and run out two months over, they couldn't really stop a wilder fight. Someone tweeted me the other day and said, well, you asked for an exception for the Klitschko fight when you had a mandatory. I said, yeah, we had a signed contract. You can't ask for an exception request on the hope that you can make a fight. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we wouldn't let a mandatory get in the way of a unification because you put the procedures in place to, to make sure that you get that exemption request. But he wouldn't sign a contract. We can't ask for exemption request. Does that make sense? Yeah. So with Mendoza, mm -hmm. this 24-hour thing... Yeah, but you've got to understand. Right, let, me, let me make this easy for you to understand. On... I'll find it. I'll, t I'll tell you the date. It was it was April sometime. So was he saying to you, constant. sign the Povetkin fight or get the Wilder fight sorted in twenty four hours? No, but he came back. What happened was he saw the comments from Shelley on Monday saying in five days' time we'll have our comments on the contract. And I'm saying to him, just give me another day. Just give me another day. And he's seen that and said these people like Wilder's not signing this contract. You have to fight Povetkin. We're certainly not waiting till Friday for his comments. Then it's not even going to get done. So originally, on the... Would they actually strip Anthony Joshua of that belt? Uh, no, but I think... Well, we couldn't have asked for an exception request within the time frame, no. So, would they have stripped him? I don't know. I, they're, they're pretty close with Povetkin and... and uh, but they're very close with you and Joshua as they, well. They are. But listen, I don't think... I think they would have supported... The, another thing, people go, oh, the WBA didn't want the Wilder fight. Do you know the sanction fees from the Wilder fight? I mean, governing bodies. Um, so if you said to Mendoza, just give me a couple more weeks, what would he have no, said? absolutely not. What, he wouldn't have done I've it. been saying that for seven weeks. Every week, you ask for a seven-day extension. Right? So, I don't know, I'm putting them up here. Uh, 28th of May. We are okay with an, yet another week extension until June. George Martinez, yeah. So we, so this came, we've had about six or seven weeks of extensions from the WBA. Jose Oliver Gomez has been texting me, messaging me every day, Eddie, we need an answer. This was about for the last 10 days. Okay, just give me a day, give me a couple of days. I, I have to thank the world of boxing because they could have just called Perspid to much sooner and then we were fucked to, in terms of getting an exemption request. But we gave it every single opportunity. But you don't understand, we can't apply for an exception request without a signed contract. Do you understand? So we got a fight. The, the, the one thing that stands out of all this stuff is there wasn't an email that was sent or a move that was made without the discussions with Anthony Joshua. All right? I don't believe that Wilder has been filled in properly on what's happened here. Because some of the things he says, like, I don't believe Deontay Wilder's a liar, but some of the things he says, he's either a liar or he's been lied to. And I go with lied to, because I don't think he is a liar. But he's wrong on so many levels, and I would do anything to get him in a room and tell him the truth about what happened. This he sounds might... very familiar. To what? 
uh, what you were saying about the Chris Eubank situation. Same thing. Because I believe when you sit down and just explain, like, why isn't Deontay Wilder saying to Dinkle, why didn't you go back to them? Why did you send them an email on Sunday needing another five days to make your comments when you already knew your comments? Am I missing something here? Does that not sound weird to you? And I, don't, I know you like to sit, but I don't I mean, am I losing my marbles? No, I'm just so we know that. our comments, but we'll send them to you in five days. Funnily enough, in the couple of days leading up to this happening, in a lot of my media interviews, I said, we're under massive pressure from the WBA. So, what are they trying to do? Run the clock down? That's, that could be another conspiracy theory. I don't know why else you'd wait. Why not just go on the email? Uh, Eddie, just to let you know, these are our comments. If there's only two, like, and they were apparently just one-liners, like they've said to a couple of media, why wouldn't you just put that in an email on Sunday? What do you believe those comments to be? They're talking about, um, well, they said the date and the venue. Bullshit. They knew that what the dates that we were working towards. But was that in the actual, that wasn't in the contract? The, 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 what was in the contract was that uh, it was the next fight of Joshua. And, but I sent them a message on the Friday. When I sent them the contract, I said, I'm just working on the date and the venue. He come back to me and said, no problem. Just, we need to know, is it the next fight? I said, yes, it is the next fight. But why couldn't you put a date in a video? Because we're, we're talking to the Prince Palace Stadium. In November, they have rugby throughout the whole month. What about the date in September you've got? No, that's not. Because I need the American t TV revenue. You've got Canelo against Golovkin going the week before. I'm, I can't go the week after with either a pay-per-view or a subscription model to generate the revenue for that fight. I'll get laughed out of town. You imagine me going to Showtime saying, oh, oh good news, it's on the 22nd of September. The, the, week, after, oh, sorry, the week after Canelo Golovkin. I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't get the money. So when we missed that spot, as I said in all my interviews, it's end of October, November. So September for Wild was never the case because it was always... Only, only, be... No, but when Canelo Golovkin wasn't happening... But then we... it was soon rumoured that that fight no, would happen in no, September that... anyway. Yeah, but when it was off and it wasn't happening, I was prepared to go on the 15th yeah. to jump into that slot. But, you know, and even Showtime, I had conversations with Showtime. They were happy to go pay-per-view on the fight. And I, you know, I see the other stories. Oh, he just wanted it on his own. It, it doesn't matter where I wanted it. I could have put it where I want. I could have put it on the fucking moon on TV. We controlled the rights. He took a purse. So this was not a done deal on his own. We would have gone to every broadcaster and looked at the best deal to bring in the most money to the event. So we would have gone to Showtime. We would have gone and, and next fight with Anthony Joshua that will be against Alexander Povetkin. People say, oh, it's on his own. It might be. He's a free agent in terms of his deal in America. We will be going back to Showtime. We've invested in him heavily. We will be going to the zone. We're already speaking to HBO about Anthony Joshua. He has nothing to do with his zone deal. But they, fuck, they want him bad. Of course they do. It's the biggest star in world boxing. And I will not allow Anthony Joshua's career to be messed around and wait another two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. All of a sudden we're in July. So this is why we take the decision. We are fighting for Vetkin. Good luck, you crack on. You, you've had our offer, by the way, for the other one, and we will fight you next. There's the contract. All you've got to do is sign it. If we're bluffing, sign a contract. If those, I'll make it even clearer, this is even better. If those two changes are the only changes you're concerned about, send it to us. Apparently he said one of them we would have conceded to. I'm guessing that was the rematch or whatever it was. We'll sign a con You sign a contract, you put it up on the internet. Right? That you've signed it. You bring it into me yourself and I'll sign it in front of you on IFL TV. And then we'll see who's bullshitting. That contract mirrored the terms that they accepted in an email. Let me ask you, why is the option of losing a belt not an option? Because it's an undisputed heavyweight world title fight. It is the first time in God knows, I think it's the first ever fight for all the governing body belts. The WBO, the IBF, the WBC and the WBA. And the ring you, you may have to lose one of these belts next year anyway. Not if we, we fight Wilder. Yeah, but, all right, say you don't fight Wilder. No, then we may have to, yeah. Eventually, it's going to be very difficult. Or we have to fight our next mandatory 
next, which could be the winner of Pulev against Miller or whoever. Did you, did you say, someone tweeted me this earlier mm -hmm. on, did you say that if you had to go to Russia to fight Povetkin, mm. that you may have um, mm. vacated the belt? Did no. you say that? Well, that would be Josh's decision, but we're not going to Russia. No, but I'm just saying the possibility of vacating the belt. Have you, mm. you have spoken well, about that before. Yeah, we you? wouldn't particularly want to go to Russia, but we do everything we do not to vacate the belt. Josh understands that the fight doesn't have as much value without the undisputed tag. Everything that we've tried to do is to win all the belts. Yeah? But it's usually always said that sometimes the fights are bigger than so, the belts. Yeah, that's true. But this fight is about the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. If we have to fight Wilder for no belt, I'll give you an example. If we get to a stage where he doesn't accept the fight and one day he does, but there's no way out, we might have to fight him without all the belts. But don't you think it would be amazing to have an undisputed fight? It would be. I know, but that's what we want. But can I know and Golovkin are fighting, don't they? Yeah, but mm, they've already fought once. And for me, this is the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. So would we go to Russia to fight Povetkin? Pro probably, probably not. I doubt it, I don't know. But we're not going to Russia. We've done a deal for the UK. So... It's a mute point. Did you send the email after his Twitter rampage, Deontay Wilder's Twitter rampage, or before? Last night? Yeah. Have you got a time? Um, I'll tell you when I said, sent the email to Deontay. Well, it's irrelevant, really, if you didn't know. I thought you might have sent it. I sent the email. So, his Twitter thing. Probably, and no, that's just got. I sent it at 10.48 pm last night. Um, Very disappointed that your team never came back to us on the contract. But nevertheless, I would still like to try and get this fight made as soon as possible. So you've sent it before he... Our offer of 15 million and all the terms still stand for an April 13th bout at Wembley. So we look forward to receiving your team's comments when you are ready. In addition, we will offer you $5 million for a defence of your world title in the US against Brazil or a mutually agreed opponent in October. This would be a two-fight $20 million package. I look forward to hearing from you, old boy. I didn't put the old boy bit in. So we will see. Again, I just think I think that's as, as long as we decide to fight, like pl make plans to fight someone else. So, at this stage, two months, I don't know, a month, two months, three. Like, there's no, we're nowhere near organising our next fight. And this is not like Josh said to me. My mind is on Povetkin. If that's who we're fighting, I want to think about who we're fighting after. I said, no, no, that's up to me to plan your future. But Deontay Wilder can take this fight. They don't want to fight me. I knew it all along. I called a bluff. Sign a contract. And I might get in trouble with Sky Sports, but I will do it on IFL. You've got to do it on IFL. I will. Really get me the contract. So there's two points, apparently. One they was conceding to, and the other was just a date of the venue, apparently. Okay. It's April 13th at Wembley. Done. Deal done. Send the contract. I'll sign it in front of you. Bullshit. So let's see. That's the best way to find out if they're real. They'll probably cut. No, no, you, you've missed the boat now. Every fuck, it's the only fight for you, mate, where you're going to make more than lucky the five million I'm giving you. When are you expecting to announce the Povetkin fight? Um, probably. We're we're working with Wembley at the moment. I really want to. Not waiting back for comments. No, there's no comment. No, listen, I, hands up. I've been negotiating this Povetkin deal. Yeah. Well, I have to. I can't just wait for Wilder for two months and not do anything. Do you think they've not got a deal with Brazil to fight? Like, in terms of Heyman talking to Brazil for the fight. But I don't know how, how much Wilder's getting for that Brazil fight. I hope he's getting at least $5 million, because that's what I'm offering him. So... Is there a case also of this, that a reluctancy to really want to work with you? No, I don't think so. Else. I think a fight... Well, there must be this... something to do with that. Who, Deontay? Well, the whole team. Uh, I don't care. Do you think I'm bothered about working with Shirley Winkle? Mate, do you know the pay-per-view bites that would happen when me and Shirley get up on the, on the old press conference? You'll be knocking one out. 
What what involvement has Lou de Bella had in? No, so. okay. he's not. You know, he know he's not. No, I was just wondering because it's gone a bit quiet with no, Lou. But I'm, 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 me and Lou are really getting on. Yeah. We speak. Good. We speak a lot, and he, we're going to be working closely with Lou de Bella. Good. Um. This is this is a huge. But I, I just I just thought last night. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put this out there, so we really find out who's bluffing. So it's there. Like you ain't got to sign it tomorrow. You haven't even got to send me your comments Friday. But if you do, and you do what you said, we will sign this contract immediately. Do you believe that the, you know the one thing he was saying that they didn't agree on, but they would go ahead with it anyway, mm -hmm. was that to do with the rematch? Yeah, but the rematch, the rematch, we, when we sent an offer, yeah, it was all mapped out in the offer. They said, we agreed to all these terms. It wasn't, you can't come back later on and all of a sudden go, actually, sorry, I've changed your mind to what we agreed to. Well, you can do, but it, obviously the deal breaks down. So why did you agree to the deal in the first place? Why did you agree to that term? And now so you they want to agree to the rematch only for in if, America. Yeah, we do the rematch if in America. Wilder wins. Is the rematch? Yes. Yep. If Josh mm -hmm. is to win, mm -hmm. no rematch. Okay. Correct. But like, if that's a problem, don't accept it and then change the goalposts. Do you understand? But the the flat fee of fifteen million dollars mm -hmm. that was, was a good offer. That was agreed. Yeah. Even, yeah. Everything called referring to There was about a four or five offer. points that were agreed yeah. within the. But that was the, the main offer. one, surely, wasn't it? The fee? Yeah, I mean, we offered him 12.5 million. We upped it to 15 million. Would you have upped it if they'd declined no, that no, offer? No, listen, we upped it, what, 20%? So, he's making two and a half, three million dollars a fight. He's been offered 15 million. And by the way, the whole thing about the rematch is if he wins. It was, I think it was a 50 50 on the rematch. So he would make in America, I don't know, minimum 30 million, right? So, right about now, if he signs this offer, especially the one that I made him last night, and beats Anthony Joshua, he will make 50 million dollars in his next three fights. Ironically, yeah, probably more actually, probably 60 million dollars. And this is the same guy that accused anti Joshua. You know, man. I mean, by the way, like Joshua has been sending, a Wild has been sending Joshua emails, like privately. Oh, come on, man, you've got to take this. Don't let these guys, uh, you know, play with your mind about taking. It's like, mate, fucking, he decides. So what has Joshua been manning him back? Or not? No, he just forwards him to me. Same <laughs> <laughs> deal with this. No, he's been talking to him. He's been talking to him. They both want the fight. But this is a way Josh knows all about. It. I said, I said, Josh, let's let him sign a fight, right? Well, you'll commit to the fight next. Of course, I'll commit to the fight next. So that's why this is the best situation. Just sign it. It's there. So all this, he said this. He said this. He said this. Just ask the question. Okay, forget who said what. You want the fight, right? You agreed to the fight, right? Yes, yes. Okay, there it is. Well, all of a sudden you don't want the fight now. All of a sudden you don't agree to the terms. You only had two, just two little ones that you were going to agree to. It's just going to take you six days to agree to those and to let us know what they were. Who do you blame for this? If you were to blame someone... I just think that, you know, I don't... I never really knew who was at fault. But when I saw that, what you read out earlier, saying Eddie Hearn just made us a bullshit offer, right? If someone made one of my fighters a bullshit offer, I wouldn't want them to sign it. Does that make sense? Right. So, but all right. Could you just take it anyway, knowing that it's a bullshit? Yeah, mate, mate, listen, opinion? again, when the fighter calls the shots, I don't know their relationship, but if, if they come on to me and say, all right, I'll give Anthony Joshua 10 million to fight Deontay Wilder. That's our final offer. And I went back to try and renegotiate and said no. I think that offer was a complete joke, right? And I'd go to Josh and go, Josh, this offer is a complete joke. I wouldn't want him to take that fight. But if he turned around to me and said, fuck it, I'll do it. But I wouldn't exactly be over the moon jumping through hoops. Maybe that's what Shirley's doing. Maybe he never wanted to take the fight because he thought the offer wasn't good enough. So you sent... But, could, but do you understand that yeah. if like, if I'm the fighter now, if I'm Deontay Wilder, I'm phoning up Shelley and going, can I ask you a question? Why did it take you six days to go back and you still haven't made any comments? And why did you email on Sunday and say you needed another six days to make your comments? But you already knew what your comments were. Did you ask him that? No, because I got the email on... Another thing he does is he's very, he's quite, he's quite shrewd, old Shirley Winkle, in a sort of, like, I'd say childish way. But he sends his emails, like the most of his emails, at about eleven o'clock, US time, right? 
And he's in New York. Yes. So I get them at four, four o'clock in the morning. morning. So I really get them at eight o'clock in the morning or whenever, whenever I wake up. Right? So he will say, I replied on Sunday. But obviously I got it on Monday. He didn't reply till even Monday night. Or Tuesday. I mean, took, it's like, well, I still replied the same day. But he, he's, he's quite an interesting plan. Words. You can't see that stuff. I can see that stuff. But people just get told. So like the geezer, what's his name, who was having a pop last night on Twitter, Brendan. Sure. Yeah. Oh, my sources. His sources are probably Stephen Espinosa. Right? Well, Stephen Espinosa is told about this by Shirley and probably by Al. So I don't know what they're telling him. What was that thing he said about the 50 million in the UK? Yeah, he said, oh, first you ask for 50 million in the US. They agreed and send you... This whole thing, send you proof... We sent you proof of funds. You must have used the wrong email address, mate, because you never sent me any proof of funds. But I didn't even ask for that. All I asked for was a contract, which you refused to send. But this Brendan geezer goes, yeah, you asked for 50 million, they gave it to you. You said you wanted a UK fight, so they agreed to give you 50 million in the UK. Absolute bollocks. That was never, ever discussed in the slightest. We just wouldn't, they wouldn't send us a contract. We spoke to the team and we said, you know what? We'd rather do this fight in the UK. So thanks for your offer. Here's our offer. Four weeks after that, they come back and said, we accept. A couple of days after they heard that we'd signed to fight for Beckham. So anyway, if I was watching this, maybe I wouldn't believe Eddie Hearn. Maybe I wouldn't believe Shirley Winkle. But all I'm saying is, just note the important things. Why so long? Nothing, that doesn't make sense at all. But again, the good news is, it's there. Sign it. Did you, did you, or Joshua's team, whoever, they said, sent uh, an email to the Missy confirming that the next fight will be for Pavetkin mm-hmm. and not them? That was yesterday. That was yesterday. So when did you know from the WBA that... WBA uh, emailed me on Monday night, and I sent them an email on Tuesday late afternoon. This is Wilder. Did uh, they give you the option to get this done in a couple no, of days? No, they said, they, they come back and they said, you saw the quotes from, uh, yeah. yeah, Wilder is not returning your contract, go ahead and fight for Vetkin, we want the contracts. What is happening? Otherwise, I don't know what happens, they call purse bids or whatever, but we're not going to purse bids with Vetkin because we have a deal in place. So we turned around and said, okay, time's up, we'll fight you. But I just went back to Shelley and said, yesterday, I can't even remember now. Um, but you're saying to me, if you'd asked for like, they wouldn't a give me. A, they wouldn't give me a further extension. No, because I've asked for seven seven day extensions and probably 10 24 hour extensions or 48 hour extensions. But I think it was just he saw Shelley's comments. Dan Raphael, we'll go back to them on Friday with our comments. This was on Monday. What was your response when he said he'll get back to you on Friday? I just said, well, this was when he that came through. Funnily enough, Monday morning, and when I got the stuff from the. Um, WBA, I went back to him, it was yesterday morning, yesterday afternoon, and said, Dear Shelley, thanks for the email. I've no idea why you need another five days to review the contract, nearly two weeks in total, but regardless, I'm sure you've seen the media release and the letter from the WBA, your time is now up. Clearly you're not ready to commit to this fight, so Anthony has decided to proceed with the mandatory Alexander Vetkin and continue our dialogue to make Joshua Wilder. This is good news. Well, the good news is we have spoken to Wembley. We now have a confirmed date of April the 13th. Please feel free to insert the date into the contract. We look forward to receiving your comments on Friday or soonest, and hopefully we can move forward and give the fans what they want. Kind regards, Eddie. Pretty simple. So, what was but the, you can't say, you can't say, like, Shelly comes out, they never wanted this fight. We're here. So sign the contract, or tell me what you want to change, but apparently you don't need to change anything. And it's done. So you can do as many Instagram videos as you want. Oh yeah, these guys, they're just playing games. Sign it and call our bluff. I won't do it. That's why I asked if, if they got kind of an attitude to you. It's like, fuck you, Hearn. We don't want to do anything with you. The Wilder included. Well... If they did, why did they accept the deal? No, I'm talking about now. No, because they're not idiots. Like, they can't, there's no money out there for them. You know? So what, how do you see this playing out now? Then? They sign the contract. So you think they will sign the contract? If they want the fight, yeah. Of course. Like, what, what am I dealing with here? Like, 
you, you're screaming and shouting that you want the fight. And no, we don't want the fight. Sign it. You can box in September, October. We have a massive build up to the biggest fight in world boxing. It's only one fight away. I don't, I'm, I might just be missing something here. Screaming and shouting. They don't want the fight. This was all a joke. They're never going to fight me. Sign it. You'll find out. Because our signature will be on before yours is even dry. So, your move. <laughs> okay, okay. Is there anything you want to add about that before I ask you about something? Not really. Else? Just, um, no, I, you know, I just ask people to just try and take a breath and just think about what I've said. The main thing is nothing about the two week period they wanted or 12 days to get the comments back and they already knew the comments. None of it makes sense. But forget the past. The future is now. The future is here. You scream and shout that Anthony Joshua does not want to fight Deontay Wilder. He'll never fight him. He will never fight me. He's, it's there. If the WBA mm -hmm. hadn't put it on you to do this fight with Povetkin this week or yesterday, where do you think you would be now in this? Waiting for their comments on the contract. And I don't believe that there was only those two points that they discussed. I mean, people said to me, uh, oh, they were never going to take the fight because it would have been on zone. Why not have been on zone? But when my dad met Shirley, it was quite clear that we could put the fight on any channel we wanted. So, presuming they don't have a deal with Showtime. Maybe, maybe uh, that he got it wrong. Maybe, uh, But you wouldn't accept a fee and give control of all the rights if that was the case. So again, that's not a blocker, but maybe they come back now and say, actually, we were wrong. We do have a, a deal with Showtime, but they never meant, that was never discussed. So, but, 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 just listen to what they've said in your thing. There was two comments. One was the date and the venue, which they knew what we were working on anyway. And the second one was this rematch thing, which they've already agreed to, but they'll give on that one, right? So there you go, it's a done deal. Fucking hell, we can all go home. Three months of trying. We finally made the world of Joshua fight. Right, one more, one more. Hypothetically, mm -hmm. Mendoza phoned you up mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Hello, Eddie. Um, I'm going to give you another month no, to sort this out. No, if they yeah, had, know, yeah, right, yeah. if they had, so he gives you another month to yeah. sort this out. Mm -hmm. Do you get this done for, for his next fight in that month? I don't. Do, I mean, do look, we're in. Day? We're nearly in July, right? right? I'm not going to get to a stage where Joshua might be looking at a December day and may not even box again in 2018. So. To be honest, when I got that email on Monday, he sent it on Sunday at 11 p.m., I thought, what a fucking joke. These absolute liberty-taking wind-up merchants. That's what I thought. So I was kind of like, I phoned my old man up, I said, are they taking the fucking piss? Excuse my language. And he went, mate, they don't want to fight. So I was kind of in my head thinking, like, we're going to get the comments on Friday and it's going to be a joke, but would we have carried on? Yeah, if we didn't have a mandatory, if we didn't have World of Boxing calling us every day, if we didn't have them putting pressure on the WBA every day, would we have had to give it another week or two? Yeah, maybe. But I don't believe them. It doesn't make sense. What are the other mandatories do? So you've got so Miller you got, and... Uh, I think Pilates. it all goes in order. So WBA next, they haven't had a mandatory. IBF have had a mandatory. Yeah. You've got WBO which yeah. haven't set a final eliminator yet. I've actually applied for Dillian White against Joseph Parker to be a final eliminator with the WBO, oh, really? which I think they should do, but um, who knows. So the IBF, which is Miller Pulev at the moment, yeah. that will come after our fight in September, we will get asked to fight the IBF mandatory. We, touch wood, will have a deal in place. Already with Wilder. On you, very simple, just as I explained earlier. <laughs> Hello, IBF. We have a deal in place to fight Deontay Wilder. Here in a contract. Bosh. And they will say, this is an undisputed heavyweight world title fight. We cannot get in it the way of this. Of course, we will sanction it. Not, hello, IBF. I'm still trying to do the Wilder fight. Can I have an exception? No, fuck off, Eddie. Where's the contracts? No, don't worry about that, mate. Hopefully, it'll happen in a couple of months and we'll be sweet. It'll work like that. So We know what we're doing. Why do you think Tyson Fury got stripped? Mm. Because they didn't know what they were doing. 
We run a professional 110% solid business where we represent fighters in an unbelievable way. And we pay them great money. We tell them the truth. We make sure they're involved in every step of the way. You don't wake up one morning and you've been stripped and go, oh, this is a joke. Everyone's against me. No, no, no. You just didn't know the rules. We know the rules. So after the uh, Povetkin fight, as soon as there is victory, touch wood, or maybe even next week, we have a signed contract with Dante Wilder. The exception goes into the IBF. Please will you allow an exception where the winner has to fight the mandatory challenger. The answer will be no problem. We know what we're doing. We know exactly how to deal with the governing bodies, their rules, their mandatories, and sometimes you can't get out of it. Like, we had to fight Pulev, and then, luckily, Takam was standing by. But we would have had to fight Takam. He was next in line. So we have to fight, and, and by the way, we had to fight Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz was mandatory for the WBA. He pulled out to fight Deontay Wilder. So we would have had to fight Luis Ortiz. Now we have to fight Alexander Povetkin. By the way, do I think Alexander Povetkin should be mandatory for WBA? Not really. I think he's top three heavyweights in the world. Certainly top five heavyweights in the world. But, you know, he's been beaten once by Vladimir Klitschko, who punched him, like, just hit him with everything. And Povetkin lost on points. Brutal fight for Josh. Just go back to what I said. 22 fights. Dillian White, Dominic Brazil, Vladimir Klitschko, Carlos Takam, Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin. Get behind this kid. Get behind this kid. Even if you're one of those haters, get behind Joshua. Because what he's doing has not been seen before. And he will go all the way through and beat these guys. And he will beat Wilder. And he will do it in style. I just pray that that man signs this contract because it's going to be one hell of a build-up. Okay. Moving on from that, mm -hmm. finally. Um, great news for Callum Johnson mm. uh, against uh, <coughs> Serbia. Mm. 6th of October. Yeah. Possibly, what, New York or Chicago? Yeah, we're just building out US cards at the moment. October 6th looks like New York or Chicago. That's the date. Is October it your second 6th. show? That. Uh, depends. Depends what happens with Mr. Joshua and Povetkin and so forth. Um, so, brilliant fight. Uh, undercard fight for our show. Um, Callum Johnson has balls of steel. But undercard yeah. fight? Yeah, it's not main event on the zone. Okay. Mate, we're going to have like, these cards are going to be fucking sick. These cards are going to be like, multiple world titles. Are you fights. doubling up on the Joshua Povetkin night? Mm, unlikely, no. no someone, I saw someone said, oh, that'll be double up. No, it'll be, if if, we, if they do Joshua Povetkin, it'll be a standalone. Yeah, I was going to say, because where would you be? Exactly. <laughs> Not in America. Um, so, yeah, Callum Johnson, why not? Why not? Baturbiev is a, is a beast, but he's 33. He's had two fights in two years. Have you got a deal with him? Uh, we're talking... If I'm talking, I'm talking to Yvonne Michelle. Yvonne Michelle has the promotional deal, so we're talking about co-promotional stuff. So um, it's a great fight. Got to give him a lot of credit. Of course, but but the yeah. the truth is, Coop, why, why not? Why not? And you know what? Maybe I can understand why Anthony Yard didn't take that fight and Frank Warren didn't take that fight because I know they're both undefeated, but there's a little bit more to protect with Anthony Yard in the sense of. They're building him into this, this, you know, this guy is carved out of stone, he's unbeatable, he hasn't boxed anyone yet. I mean, the, the opposition is, you like, why wouldn't you fight Callum Johnson? Why wouldn't you fight Jose Byrne? Why wouldn't you fight, well, I'm not going to fight Joshua Boetsy, they'd never take that fight. But I can understand almost why they're not jumping into the Baturbia fight. And I don't blame them for not taking it. Callum Johnson's in a diff he's been stop start. You know, he won the Commonwealth Games He's gold medal. Round in about, what, I know. Twenty months. We're gonna have to get him out somewhere behind closed doors, probably, to give him some more rounds. But do you understand what I mean? He's not. He's because of his inactivity, and you know, he's switched from promoters and all sorts. He's not got that same profile as Yard yet. So he has nothing to lose if he beats Peterbiev. And you know something else? You go into a fight like that against Betterbiev, you better be able to punch like fuck because Betterbiev can punch like fuck. 
And Callum Johnson can punch like fuck. And I don't mind being in a fight like that where you have, a, where you have the power to turn a fight. If Callum Johnson was a move and a non-puncher, I, I don't like the fight as much. And by the way, it's a massive ask. But Callum Johnson has come through some, some really rough stuff, you know? You know, his father passed away, who was his best mate, you know? Came to all his shows. And out of nowhere, he got the Buglioni fight. Then he wins that in a round. I don't know. Sometimes in life, you do a little bit of luck. Sometimes you do we know get the rubber of the green. No, we don't. We know, no, he's we know good. He's yeah, he's good. I mean, right, yeah. but he's 33. Mm. He's had a lot of amateur fights. What, three or 400 amateur fights? He's had a promotional dispute. He's been inactive. It's probably the best time you're going to get to fight him. Right? But what have you got to lose? If you get beat, you come back and you defend your British title in big domestic fights. You have a great fight with Baturbi, have and lose. You probably, I'll probably keep him in America, give him a fortune. If he wins, my God. I Bivol, Kovalev, all these major <laughs> fights. But you know, yeah. again, I go back to the power of Callum Johnson. And I, can, I know he can hurt people in that division. So Good I'll take my hat up to you got a press conference tomorrow. Yeah. Are you waiting until tomorrow to announce Khan's opponent? Yeah, I will. I mean, look, it's a, I think there's been a few leaks about it on Twitter and stuff like that. Um, as a good opponent, solid opponent. He was out for, what, a couple of years, did 30 so seconds. People know LaGreco too. Yeah, Phil LaGreco. No, I think Phil LaGreco was unlucky in the first one, so we're bringing him back for the rematch. Um, and I think you'll get a better Phil LaGreco this time. Okay, so that's confirmed. It's a joke. But no, the opponent is he's a, look, he's a, he's a solid welterweight. As I said before, he's somewhere in the middle of your big guys and Phil LaGreca. And I think we've got the perfect guy. Amy has done, what, 30 seconds in a couple of years. He needs this fight before he jumps into the Brook fight, which is obviously the one we want. Whether it's Crawford, whether it's Spence, Thurman, all those guys. And um, so, you know, I think it's a good fight. Brook wins, Khan wins mm. this year? I want it, December. December, mm. where? Manchester Arena, old uh, Cardiff. I think, they should, I think they're mad if they don't do the fight, honestly. But your vibes are they're up for it, both of them? Yeah, I think Kel wants the fight. I think Amir would like to win a world title. But also, he's at the stage of his career where he should be looking for those monster nights and monster paydays. And there's nothing bigger for both. So, I'll be trying to make that fight for sure. Just tell us who he's fighting on there now. He's fighting. Oh, I don't I feel like it's a bit, you know, we're making an announcement tomorrow. I mean, it's not oh. going to blow your socks off, oh. but it's a good fight. Okay. So. Oh. Mm. Fair enough. What's what that? else is happening? Hold on. Um, is your card done now? For? July 28th. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Anthony Fowler's fighting. Frank Buglioni's fighting. As well, they're going to be added. There's a couple of exclu exclusives for you. Well, Leone is going to be he's coming back. Through. Yeah, he's going to have an eight round fight. Okay. Yeah. Um, Good to see Frank back. Yeah, it is. Um, obviously, I haven't spoke to you since. I don't think I spoke to you since you announced Tizora. And <coughs> no, great fight. I mean, yeah. you know, as always, uh, I was talking to someone last night. I won't say who, and they said to me, "Is that you on Twitter replying to the fans?" <laughs> well, this was at like half eleven last night. I went, "Yeah." They went, "Are you fucking mad?" Why are you arguing with these people who don't know the truth? Or what? I said, because that's what we do. That's what stands us out from other people. That's what makes us different. There's no other promoter sitting up on their Twitter account answering people individually. This sad bastard does. So, for all the people who moaned about the pay-per-view, when I announced the card, it was like, mm, all right, I'll get it, it's a good card. Then we added Chisora Takem, and it was like, fuck me, fair play. This is the bollocks. So, I can't wait for that fight. I think it's a brilliant fight. I'd love some, to see Del Boy do it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I heard some rumours of someone going on your card. I've done a question out, out it on here now. Just mouth it. No, I don't know. No, I don't know about this card, but... Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Interesting. Yeah, at the moment, I mean, we're all gearing up for the new... We've got August the 4th, Caldina against Masha, yeah. which is a great little fight. Sean That's Madolger the next game, Yeah, yeah it's going yeah. to be a great night. And then September 8th will be Khan in Birmingham. And then 22nd, it looks like, for Joshua. We'll see. 29th, maybe. Um, well, have you got both dates on hold? No. If it's 22nd, it'd be Wembley. 29th might be elsewhere. 
Cardiff? No, we won't be going to Cardiff for the next one. Oh, another oh. outdoor venue? Yeah, we want to go outdoors in September. Manchester? So, that's <laughs> September. October will be in Newcastle, possibly the 20th, 13th, something like that, with Ritson, like in the Geordie Golovkin. What, in European time? Mate, sure? you weren't in Newcastle, were you? I don't. You don't really come to the shows anymore. I do. Not my shows. I do. I just wasn't in Newcastle. Mate, it was unbelievable. Did James go? No, we had Andy So you didn't there. send you or... Oh, yeah, the Scottish fella. Yeah. Mate, it I watched was... It. I paid my Sky subscription. The absolute dog's I bollocks. I fucking love Newcastle and I can't wait to go back. So that's October. What are you doing with Ritson? I'd like him to fight for the Europeans' Isle. I who's, still who's want... Got that? Uh, Easy's Tatley oh, in Finland. Yeah. I still want... Ritson, just to have a few more rounds, you know? Well, that who Kevin Mitchell was going to fight. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that. And then just gearing up for all the US cards. What about Coyle and Ritson? Yeah, Coyle's gonna, Coyle wants a big fight in the States. And I think, he, you know, he's, gonna, he's been, a, been a good servant, Tommy Coyle. I think we'll give him a nice payday and a, a good, like, a, a fucking, in the deep end fight. But we'll do that. Um... Carrier Fire, I want Carrier Fire to fight Chocolate Eater. Uh, Charlie Edwards boxed really well in Newcastle yeah. as well. Um, talking to Honda and Tom Loeffler about that, be for our US cards. Um, loads of fighters that we're talking to. Loads of fighters. Tell you what we are doing, which I'm so happy with. Signing some brilliant amateurs from America. Like top, top grade amateurs. And that's part of the, the process. How many have you signed for design? About... Six or seven, so far. But announce Fighters none. In. We're waiting for No, because we're going to, in July, we do a press conference in New York mm. to announce the first show, probably two shows, bring all our guys. No, we're going to announce two, three, four world champions. We're going to announce some former world champions. We're going to announce some big names. We're going to be announcing some brilliant amateurs. We're going to be announcing some young guys coming through, undefeated prospects. What do you know about Callum Smith and George Groves? Uh, I don't want to say too much, but early September. Okay. What else? Um, Bazza turned 70 last week. It was a good week. Had a great yeah. party here Saturday night. Was it here? Campbell Mendy. Oh, yeah, Just Campbell Just looking Mendy. to lock in the date for that. Could go on the Josh card, on the AJ card. Great fight. That's um, a final eliminator. For the WBC. Final yeah. eliminator for Marky Goss there. <coughs> Um, what did you make of Taylor the other night? Did you watch it? I didn't watch it because I had the part. I was at the party. Um, I rate Josh Taylor. I think he's a good fighter. And very clever matchmaking. Very clever matchmaking. Really impressive matchmaking. Um, I had the judges that most people thought that Taylor won it, but the judging was all over the place. So I'm just glad that there was some dodgy scoring on another show other than mine. It's not. And again, it ain't dodgy. It's just incompetence. Who was the score? Was it the Valili Iqbal fight? Where one judge had it five rounds to Valili. Yeah, yeah. No, but one, one had it five rounds to Valili and one had it five or six rounds to Iqbal. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it was one of them where one guy was just walking forward. I'm and assuming the other. they will rematch as well. I'm not sure. Might do Matty Askin against Valili in the Newcastle God. Why are you doing Askin and with a Kohli? I will be. That's that's a big fight. That'll happen this year. Yeah. What what's next for Cole anyway? Might be the Askin fight. But I'd like to see him have one more before the Askin fight. I would have liked to have seen him have one more before the Watkins fight, but he destroyed him. So maybe I'm just wrong. Could and he go in with Waddy? Is that a possibility? Yeah, I think Waddy said he's Commonwealth mandatory, but I've not been advised that's the case. But um I like Waddy. Listen, I I really wish really to work with Waddy, I really, really like him. Um, yeah, I, that that could be a fight, but the cruiserweight division's hot enough. Um, there's some good fights out there for Akoli, and again, listen, Akoli's are the same mould as Joshua, right? They'll fight anyone, so don't worry about Akoli. Don't worry about AJ. They want to fight them all, and he wants it now. He wants asking now, right? And again, I'll put my I'll put my input in. It's not up to me. And again, Joshua Boatsy is now at that stage. Yeah? 
where he's ready to go. Him against Ricky Summers is a really good fight to find out where he's at. But I'm so excited with Joshua Boatsy because now we're ready. We're ready to go. So it's great times. Again, Joey Caldina fighting Masha Dodd, big step up. Fowler's ready for the step up. You know, Josh Kelly's already run the Commonwealth. Fowler title. and Cheeseman happen. Yeah, Cheeseman's gonna fight a scene of Byfield. Oh good. So we'll get that done. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much done now, for just what fine. Card? Don't know. I wanted to Can't do it for the that on that card. What card? Next month. No, no, no. <laughs> Cheeseman's just fought and yeah, Tony's no. away. Like, a lot of the trainers go away in August, so I like really to sort of fight, have, yeah, it's really good fight. Cheeseman and Byfield, yeah. But you know, I'm hoping that Fowler, Cheeseman, you know, Fitzgerald, Egan, they're all in that mix. They're gonna, you know, it's gonna bring us some brilliant fights. Can you tell us who else is on the Birmingham card as of, yeah, I'm not with you tomorrow? Uh, I'll give you a few. Yeah, a few is um, Sam Eggington will be in a big fight on that card. He boxes on Saturday actually, um, this Saturday. We're going to do the Wellborn Langford rematch, which is obviously a local derby up there for the British middleweight title. Yeah. Um, and we'll announce some more tomorrow. Interesting. And this is at the Birmingham Arena. Birmingham yeah, Arena. I think formerly the Barclay Club. Barclay now the Club. Arena Birmingham. You should so, I mean, Khan will be filling that one. Filling it out? I think so. I mean, we did 8,000 for his return against Le Greco. It was his return, but this is a much stronger fight mm. uh, with a really good card. A lot of big ticket sellers locally. Yeah, I expect Khan to sell that. It's a bit bigger. I think it's 11,000 <coughs> 11, as well. What's your ticket update on the O2? All gone. I think they're putting some pre sale stuff back on. So 100 or something like that. It's a sellout, baby. Okay. How many buys does it do? Well, I don't think you really know like how many buys we've been doing lately. So it's hard for you to sort of. Gauge. What do you mean? I don't know how many buys you've been doing. Well, it's not made like I'm, we haven't really talked about it. Yeah, but you tell me sometimes. Do? Yeah. How many buys Joshua Parker do? Over a million. How many buys Hay Bell you do? Uh, seven hundred thousand. I don't remember telling you this stuff. How many buys does White no, Parker do? How how off was that? Oh, you pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Very nice. Guess. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty much the same. It's very similar to the first one. The first one did about eight fifty, though, didn't it? No, more like I think nearly eight hundred thousand. Okay. And this one was seven. Eight bad. No world title. But what about White Parker? How many buys? Once you get going, yeah. Would you be happy Maybe with that? Five. Yeah. I'd say near a four. So, pay -per I don't even think pay per view is like quite a weird one. Someone cut to me the other day and went, uh, what, what show was it? Was it a Newcastle show? When's your next show? I went, we got one on Saturday in Newcastle. Oh, is it pay per view? I went, no, they went, ah. Oh. I went, what do you mean, oh? Do you know what I mean? This is what you've done to me. I know, but it's like, if, you, if it's not pay per view, you don't think that it's a mega night of boxing. And I just think they're, look, like, I'm not looking to do like 10 a year, but I do think there's this. Culture and society now, where you will get round your, your pals, you have a barbecue. With what will get the boxing? You know. Yeah. But don't worry, no, there's not going to be loads. I can't. I'm just. It's brain ache talking about pay per view. Yeah. With well, it's been brain ache talking about the Wilder fight. That's why I wanted to do that thing last night, where I was just like, look, let's just draw a line under it. You say we don't want it. Sign, and we will sign within not even 24 hours. We'll sign within an hour. You make sure I'm in the country. Mm. Yeah. Right, Borofsky. Uh, where are you going? Well, it's half five. I've had a great day today. I popped up the school twice. Fucking hell. I like the way your t-shirt matches your flip-flops. You rate that? <laughs> um, I went up to school today and my daughter's, it was their sports day. So one was at like nine o'clock this morning, the other one was at one o'clock and they both won their sprints and the oldest one, the sprint, the 300 meters and the relay. And I, I'm embarrassed at my behavior what? at Sports Day. Because when I watch the filming back, it's like, go on Bella, lift your legs, race, high knees, high knees, drive to the line, drive to the line, get in there. And then I turn around, everyone's going, oh my God, like they're eight. What are you doing, you monster? But that's just 
you know. Describe England and Panama as two boxing opponents fighting each other. That one. Tyson Fury against Sefer Sefery. But, so, just fill me in, because I'm obviously following the World Cup. Um, next we have Belgium. Belgium on And it's irrelevant. It's a group, like, to top the yeah, group. Yeah, but, but, oh, to top the group. I believe so, yes. Okay, so it's not, do we want to win that? Well, <laughs> we get a much easier game, or is it by the by in the, in the, in the next, last 16? Sorry, say that again? Is by it by the by Like, you know, two teams that are similar, you prick. <laughs> do you know what? Someone who was like chairman of Leighton Orient. Yeah, right? but I'm, your football knowledge I'm is trying like, to do forty shows a year. Have you been watching Flight. it in the World Cup? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Did yeah. you feel sorry for Nigeria? Yeah, I did actually. I don't know why, but no, I did. I saw, yeah, last late goal, late goal from Argentina. I saw it, mate. Great finish. Wasn't it? Oh, took it down, Bosh. Who's going to win it? Uh, it going Croatia. No, I, I think I, I think England have got a chance. Do you know what, right? We are such a country of pessimists, aren't we? And sometimes miserable bastards because we just I don't know, we don't we don't want our own to fail. But do you know what I mean? Like in other countries, you just see. So I really feel that at the moment about this England team, there is the best vibe there has been about an England team in a World Cup for a long time. Do you get that feeling? It's not like, oh, he's in the fucking team, he's a bit of a knob, or there's some Man United players. And I, I just feel like, because he's a young team, and I think Gareth Southgate's come across really well, no idea if he's any good, but I like him, right? Do you feel this uplift from the nation for this team? 100%. More than ever before? Yes. And it's like, I mean, I know we do it every four years, we could do this, you know, we could do this. But I really feel that if we come together and get behind this team, the karma and the vibes will go a long way. That's what do I'm saying. Do you know what I need to do? Put it on pay-per-view. No. They need to win on penalties and overcome this thing. Ah, fuck that. Let's just win in there. No, honestly, there's got to come a point in the quarters... Or even the semis, where who the is the potential opponents for us after the group stages? After the group stages, mm. I don't know. Um, so it's fucking pointless having a conversation with you about it. You're accusing me of do you even watch the World Cup? You don't even know. Do you even know who's in this thing? I know Sri Lanka or not. Well. Hold on. Wing corner. Ring him up and find out who we could face. Ew, <laughs> no. <laughs> Winkle. If England win, if England win their group, who are they likely to face in the next round? Oh, fucking hell, I thought you'd... Have... He don't know anybody. You're on loud speaker in an IFL interview. I thought you'd be absolutely... Yeah, na- on speaker as well. Oh, great. I thought you'd be nailed on. Well, it's all changed because of that. It's all changed. That's what I mean. They've got a win to... They've got a win on Thursday to top the group, and yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they beat Belgium, they top the group. Hang on. This ain't great TV now. <laughs> this is well, horrendous. you're doing it hard. Call, call me back. It's oh, okay. <coughs> Let's call Gary Lineker. You are joking. Yeah. I would have rated you if you'd done that. No, you would have knocked one out for the views. Gary? Okay. Um, Alright, well this is terrible because, yeah. Alright. Okay, well, let's just get behind England, shall we? Yeah, definitely. And that includes all our fighters. Let's get behind them. Can you just give us a little 10 seconds of it's coming home? No. Be patriotic. Um, Shall we get the lyrics up? Because I don't know all the lyrics. I know, like, obviously, the 
It's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming. Wilder's coming home, he's coming home. What, you want to fight in Alabama now? Come on. Alright, Eddie Owen, thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you, people. See you soon. And uh, catch up with you soon.